in the Lord's house this evening. Take your hymnals. We'll turn to 129. 129, Rock of Ages, Cleft for Me. Stand with me if you're able. 129. Rock of Ages, Cleft for Me. Let me hide myself in thee. Amen. You may be seated. 250. 250. Burdens are lifted at Calvary. 250.
have just uh, three hymns tonight. We do have a business meeting. Uh, Brother Paul said it. We must. We shouldn't have uh, announced it. Looks like a lot of people stayed home. <laughs> but uh, that's all right. I know uh, Miss Kimberly called. She was sick, and so didn't want to spread whatever it was that she had. So do be in prayer for her. But um, as far as announcements goes here this morning or this evening, we have uh, Sunday is Easter. We are not able to get the cantata around, but we're going to have a lot of uh, special music on Easter morning. So it'll be still a special uh, Sunday service. Um, that's coming up this Sunday. Then we have the quiz tournament coming up on April 30th here at 1130. There won't be any games that day, Brother Andy, so it'll be just a, a tournament, and that's it. So, um, And then um, May 15th is the Spring Revival with Brother Caleb Reed. Did I miss anything? Um, I don't think so. Was there something else? <laughs> on May 1st? <laughs> Um, seems as though I'm forgetting something, but uh, I don't have it written down. We do have a business meeting right after the, the, the service tonight, and so uh, do stick around for that, if you will. Psalm number 51, Psalm 51 this evening, continuing on with the, uh, the, the, the theme that we've had for... The last few Wednesday evenings, the last two Wednesday evenings, I believe we, we dealt with the proper responses to the devil's attack, the proper response to um, fiery trials that God ordains in our lives. And so this evening, I'd like to, to look at our, our proper response and correction when we mess up, when we have self-inflicted Trials and, and uh, especially due to willful sinning, how to get that corrected, how to get into renewed fellowship. So Psalm number 51 this evening, this psalm was written shortly after David's uh, sin with uh, Bathsheba. And Nathan has confronted David concerning not only the sin of adultery, but also the sin of murder. Uh, he deliberately sent Bathsheba's wife, uh, husband, to the forefront of an of unnecessary battle, right up against the wall, to the heat of a battle, and he was killed, and that was his intention. And, but we have the steps that David took to renew that broken fellowship with God. So let's read here Psalm number 51. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy <coughs> tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Against thee, thee only, have I sinned, and done this evil in thy sight that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest, and be clear when thou judgest. Behold, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness, that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins, and blot out all mine iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. Then will I teach transgressors thy way, ways, and sinners shall be converted unto thee. Deliver me from blood guiltiness, O God, thou God of my salvation, 
and my tongue shall sing aloud of thy righteousness. O Lord, open thou my lips, and my mouth shall show forth thy praise. For thou desirest not sacrifice, else would I give it. Thou delightest not in burnt offering. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart, O God, thou wilt not despise. Do good in thy good pleasure unto Zion. Build thou the walls of Jerusalem. Then shalt thou be pleased with the sacrifices of righteousness, with burnt offering and whole burnt offering. Then shall they offer bullocks upon thine altar. Dealing mostly with the first 12 verses this evening, let's look to the Lord in prayer. Our dear Heavenly Father, we pray that you would be glorified in our, our worship service tonight. Lord, accept our songs of praise, we pray. Uh, accept our uh, study of thy word that we might learn something new, that we might um, be refreshed in spirit. Lord, I pray that you would accept our prayers and um, the business meeting to follow, that you would be glorified in all that is said and done, and that we might be edified in Jesus' name. Amen. Most often, sad to say, actually, most often, when a believer deliberately disobeys God, willful sinning, like David did here with his sin with Bathsheba, um, he continues on further and further into sin, trying to excuse himself for the sin that he has uh, committed, rather than humble himself, rather than face the consequences, rather than face the embarrassment, he continues down that road instead of repenting and oftentimes we see guilt weighing down upon him and resulting in a, a withdrawing from god a ceasing from working for god a ceasing from witnessing uh, for god and then an an accusing spirit accusing those who remain faithful of being judgmental of being unfriendly and people often ask, how could David, who committed such atrocious sins, how could David be called by God a friend of God? Well, the answer is that when his sin was pointed out, he wasn't sinless. The answer is when he, his sin was pointed out, he humbled himself, he admitted his sin fully, no excuses, and he repented. He became broken. He acknowledged his transgressions, an attribute rarely seen even among the saints of God. I do want to stress as we get into this, uh, once more, as I did a few weeks ago, the difference between positional sanctification and progressive sanctification. David alludes to it slightly here in verse number seven. Um, positional sanctification is salvation. It is being born again. And we are cleaned and made whole by what? By the blood. Amen. By the blood of the Lamb. That is our posi positional sanctification. Um, our sins are eternally atoned. We are freed from the penalty of sin. Freed from the penalty of sin. David makes reference to it in verse number 7 with uh, purge me with hyssop. Hyssop was a small uh, medicinal bush, or a, a small bush used often for medicinal purposes, but it, it was what the priests used to apply or to sprinkle the blood, uh, dip it into the blood and sprinkle it all, all over the leper uh, for uh, the ceremonial cleansing of the leper. Now, uh, progressive sanctification is the cleansing from the defilement of sin. Not the, 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 the penalty of sin, but the defilement of sin. And that is a continual washing process, not with the blood, but with the water. Or, uh, washing of the water of the word. The Bible says that we are sanctified um, by the washing of the water of the word. And that cleansing is the renewal of the broken fellowship. Um, we're only positionally sanctified once. We never lose that. But we constantly need to be cleansed um, by the Word of God. 
cleanse and, and progressive sanctification with uh, the cleansing of the Word of God. There are plenty of Bible references to broken fellowship. In Isaiah 59, we have, um, But your iniquities have separated you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. Um, doesn't mean that there was a, a broken salvation. No, there's a broken fellowship. The New Testament example of the, of the vine in John chapter 15 um, when, when the, the branches are gathered and they're burned, that doesn't mean that if you um, lose your salvation, you're going to go to hell. That's not talking about, about salvation there. That's talking about fellowship um, and abiding in the vine. James 4, 8, draw nigh unto God and he will draw nigh unto you. How? Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. There should be no question in anybody's mind, anybody who has read uh, the story uh, of the adultery of, of David and Bathsheba, there should be no, uh, no, one's, no uncertainty as to why that fellowship with God was broken for David. It was self-inflicted. He had sinned, not only with adultery, but with murder. Um, and this was something he had brought on himself. In verse number 11, we see that there is a, a definite a separation. And, and it needs to be, he needs to be restored. Take not away thy Holy Spirit. He, he felt it. He knew it was different. He knew it was wrong. Um, there was a definite separation. So I want to look tonight at the process that David took for repentance and, and renewal of that fellowship and, uh, and how it can apply to our lives. First of all, there's, there's two basic categories, and, and the first one is repentance. It is absolutely necessary. Repentance, the first thing that is necessary in the lives of believers, you know that's true in the lives of the unsaved as well. Repentance is the very first thing that is necessary. It does no good to resolve to be better. It does no good to resolve to, to turn away from my sin and to stop doing wrong and to initiate reforms. It does no good. The very first thing I need to do is repent of what I did wrong. Right. Repent of my sin. Admit that I'm a sinner and guilty before a holy God. And under repentance, the first thing that David did was, verse number one, he prayed for mercy. First thing we see is a prayer for mercy. David started his prayer to God with a plea for mercy. He knew he deserved punishment. He knew he deserved death, but he requ requested God for, for loving kindness. He requested God for mercy, a multitude of tender mercies to withhold from him what he deserved. His plea was not because of some good he had gone done, uh, some charity he had donated to, or, or some um, good thing that deserved attention. No, it had nothing to do with his worthiness or anything good he had done, but solely upon the love of God because he was a child of God. A love of the Father for a son. The Father does not um, cast out of his family because of a sin. And so his desire is to restore fellowship. That's the Father's desire. If we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us. Amen. We don't deserve that. But he is faithful and just to forgive us uh, and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And so David prayed that God, in, in the last part of this verse, that God would not only... Um, uh, forgive his sins, but he would blot them out. <laughs> blot them out so that so nobody would be able to read them anymore. He didn't want God to take his record and, and, and strike a line through murder and strike a line through adultery and leave it there for people to, to see and say, oh, he, he did those things, but he was, he was forgiven of them. He wanted his record to be clean. He wanted it to be blotted out, even the remembrance of it. He wanted to be fully 
in God's record. You know, man holds on to things. And really, we have David's um, story told to us as a warning. Not because God hadn't forgiven him. Not because God hadn't blotted it out. I believe that God did blot it out in his book of heaven. But it's, it's for us as a warning here on earth. Yet, but it won't be remembered for eternity. And so, uh, the second thing was, we have a prayer for mercy, but a request for cleansing. Wash me throughly. We might say in our terminology, through and through, uh, or, or, or thoroughly, um, from mine iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. He wanted both the cause of sin a wrong meditations, wrong thoughts to be taken care of, as well as the expression of sin cleaned up so that it wouldn't happen again. So many times we want our reputation preserved, but we still want to toy with sin. And so David is saying, no, I want to be clean. clean. I want to clean up um, not only the iniquity, but and this, uh, I, want, I want to be washed throughly from mine iniquity, from the cause that I, uh, the thoughts and the meditations that caused it, but also the expression, how it came to pass. It was like he was comparing himself to a, a stained garment or a, uh, a, a stained piece of clothing, saying, Lord, use the strongest soap you need to use. Use the, the harshest uh, scrub brush you need to use. Wash me through it. Whatever it takes um, for, for you to get me clean. Run me through the ringer if you need to. Wash me throughly until those stains are gone. Until I don't even recall uh, that they ever existed. And so, uh, when we come to God begging for mercy, admitting that we have sinned, admitting that we were wrong, that we have um, broken that fellowship, we better be ready to get Get cleaned up God's way. We better be ready. If he's extending that mercy and that forgiveness, we better be ready to uh, make plans and, and put things in place so it doesn't happen again. Get truly clean so that um, we're all, uh, we're not even tempted to do that again. I remember as a kid, uh, my mom washing my, <laughs> my mouth out with soap. I tell you what, I wasn't even tempted to say that word again. I don't even remember what, what it was, so it worked. It was truly washed. Um, but uh, as we get down to verse number 7, we see the reference there to the ceremonial cleansing of the, of the leper with the purging of hyssop. The leper being the picture of a sinner, um, picture of each one of us really, had to be completely cleansed before he could enter back into fellowship. And that was, that's what this is about, the fellowship with the Father. The leper had to be completely cleansed before he could enter back into fellowship with others. And so David is comparing his sin to the polluted condition of a leper and what he needed to have for cleansing that God did make provision for. But how many times do we read about people taking advantage of being cleansed of leprosy. In the Old Testament, we only read about it once. And that was for Assyria, not for any in the land of, uh, well, I guess we, we read of uh, Miriam being cleansed of leprosy, but that was uh, more of an uh, answer to prayer from Moses than a uh, intercession of the priest himself. So thirdly, under repentance, we have a full acknowledgement of sin in verses 3 and 4. A full acknowledgement of sin. David doesn't hold anything back. He doesn't make any Adam and Eve excuses. He doesn't uh, uh, blame anyone. He doesn't put any blame on Bathsheba. He, 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 he just blames. He says, my sin. This, this is my transgressions. This is not a half-hearted acknowledgement. It is a vivid consciousness of the blackness of his sin and the full uh, significance of how it has affected and hurt other people and, uh, and, and the significance of his sin against God. Then 
He acknowledges not only his sin, in verses 5 and 6, he acknowledges his sin nature. His sin nature. Uh, David acknowledges that his sin nature is in stark contrast with God's holiness, with God's character. And it, the desire of God is for us to be grounded in truth. Um, desirous truth in the inward parts. Way down in deep. Um, so that really the roots are deep and, and that's the first thing you think when you're surprised or first thing you think when you wake up or the first thing you think in different situations um, so that our default has become God's truth. He desires our truth to be in our inward parts and, and hidden um, in the hidden part that thou shalt make me to know wisdom. That we would acknowledge God. What does God's word say? Is that my first? My first. I got a phone call this last week. We'd like you to be involved in such and such. What's the first thing I think? Oh, that will elevate me in such and such a community. Or is my first thought, what's God's thoughts on this? What does God's word say on this? And, um, and, and, and when this truth of God is deep down in our hearts, hidden in our hearts. That's when it becomes our default. Uh, what would God have me to do? Have I acknowledged God before I made my decision? Such a deep problem as the sin nature of man, which David admits to here, um, cannot be dealt with on the surface. It needs to get down in the inward parts. It needs to be a change of part. Then we see in verses 7 through 9 the result of the cleansing. The result of cleansing. We've touched on this already uh, a little bit concerning the purging of the hyssop uh, and the restoration that it produced for the leper. This was God's provision. It was complete. It was complete. Uh, the purging, the, the, the hyssop was taken, dipped in, in, in blood, and that was part of the ceremonial cleansing of the leper. That, that was necessary. But David mentions, or maybe I should say he alludes to the washing with water as well. Wash me and I shall be whiter than, clo uh, than um, snow. Um, you know, it would have been pretty foolish for the leper to be ceremonial cleansed by the blood and, not to ha and still put on his filthy um, garments that he had worn for the last year. They were covered with all the pus and, and, and the garbage and disease that, that he had. No, Moses made provision not only for the leper to be cleansed, but for his clothing and his stuff and his, and his, uh, his house as well, which needed to be cleaned. But uh, he couldn't walk around in that corruption. This would break fellowship as well, which is the picture that, that David is giving here. Um, he needed to be washed with water as well for the possibility for that friendship and fellowship to be renewed with family and friends. And of course, this water washing is the picture of the, the, the cleansing of the word of God. David requested that he hear joy and gladness once again. He, he, he had a broken spirit. He was broken in spirit so much that it affected his health. It was as if, as if he had broken bones. It was as if he, his, his spirit within him was so broken that it affected his, uh, his whole being. But the forgiveness of God healed that which was broken, and it was like new. And he, he again acknowledges his sin and his unworthiness in verse number 9. But he prays that God will clean up that record and restore his fellowship. So after we see these steps of repentance, we also see his desire not to be left where he was, but desire to be renewed in fellowship once more and restored in his walk with God. And so verses 10 through 12, we see his prayer for renewal. Four things we see here that... that, that he prayed that would be renewed, that he would be equipped once more to serve God and be in fellowship with God. First of all, in verse number 10, create a clean heart. 
Create in me a clean heart, O God. The heart is the, in the Bible, is the center of our thoughts, the center of our imaginations and, 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 and meditations and, and where we plan things. And, and David admitted that his nature was a sin nature, but he asked God to create something new. He wants to be a new creature. He wants old desires and old meditations to pass away and all things to become new. In Psalm 19, I think it's verse 14, he says, Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. What is acceptable to the Lord? Nothing but holiness. Right. Acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. We need a clean heart if we are to live a clean life. That's that, that's uh, physically and scientifically correct as well. And if, you, if your heart is not working right, your body's not going to work right. And we need a clean heart, a good working heart, if we are to have a clean life. We can't contemplate and, and toy with wicked thoughts and and um, and, and such like and not think that it will affect number one our fellowship with god but number two our future actions you you think on it long enough you're going to do it you're going to find a way to do it and um, i think that's where we're so deceived many times solomon said eat thou not the bread of him that hath an evil eye neither desire thou his dainty meats don't associate with them why for as he thinketh in his heart so is he Second thing that David desired was a right spirit, a right spirit. Verse number 10, the, the, the last part of the verse. Renew a right spirit within me. I think all of us can think back to a time when we did the right thing with the wrong spirit. We talked about Jonah on Sunday. Jonah did the right thing. He did the bare minimum of what he was supposed to do, but it sure was the wrong spirit. David asked for a right spirit. Many, spo uh, many, many spontaneous sins happen because we carry a wrong spirit. The devil knows, well, if I present this and he has time to think on it, he'll think it through and, 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 and not do it because it's so obviously wrong. But if I just shove it in his face and it's an instantaneous reaction, um, it's going to be anger or offense or some wrong word that defiles a, a testimony for God or whatever it might be. Um, if we carry a wrong spirit, we're going to, at some point, the devil's going to get it out of us. And so we need to allow the spirit of God. That's the only right spirit we ought to have. <laughs> the spirit of God uh, to be in control. If God is not in control, then the world, the flesh, and the devil, um, one of them is going to be in control, and that'll end in failure. I can think back to an example um, of, you know, somebody who was scared by a dog I was with. Somebody who was scared by a dog, and instantly, some curse word comes out. <laughs> didn't, didn't know that was in there. Why? Why? Because there was a wrong spirit that was carried. And David says, I, I, need a, I need to be renewed in a right spirit. I don't even want to think those thoughts. I don't even want to say those thoughts. Third thing he asked for was the presence of God. Presence is the personal favor and blessing extended to the person who is uh, in God's will. Who is obeying God's plan. You know, a child that is doing... That which is required of him, a child that is obedience, um, knows that he'll be accepted in the Father's presence. And that's what David wanted. Uh, there's no fear. There's, no, there's nothing but peace and contentment. Remember when, I, I've just recently read through 1st, um, 2nd Samuel and in 2nd Kings now. 1st uh, Kings, 2nd Kings, and, and I think it was in... Um, Second Samuel, the story of Absalom, um, who 
ran off to his grandparents up in the land of Gesher, and then he did some conniving, and Joab did some conniving, and, and got him back into the land. But it says that he came, David allowed him to come back into Jerusalem, but he lived two full years in Jerusalem and was not permitted to see the king's face. Yeah. Was, he, he was permitted to come back in, but he, he was not, did not have the favor of the king's presence. Why? There was no repentance. There was no repentance. He, he, he didn't uh, regain that favor because he didn't ever admit he did anything wrong. And David knew that he would not be able to continue without the presence of the Holy Spirit. He had lost something, and he would not be able to continue without the Holy Spirit. And he prayed that God would not cast, um, uh, cast him away from his presence and not take the Holy Spirit from him. And the last thing I want to mention tonight is David prayed for the restoration of joy. He prayed for, in this renewal, he prayed for a clean heart, a right spirit, the presence of God, and a restoration of joy. I love this picture that is given uh, in the word restore. The restoration. If the right person does the restoration, it, that which was old and useless becomes so useful. That which was um, broken and weak, that which was smashed and, and, and ruined can be reinforced, it can be rebuilt into something absolutely beautiful and stronger and better than it was to begin with. I've seen old homes and old barns um, that, that were restored. It takes a lot of money, oftentimes more money than building new. But when they're all done, they've got the old bones and the character and and um, they're, they're just beautiful and strengthened much more than maybe they were to begin with. Uh, old, uh, old cars or that, that were restored or, or that which was smashed and, and, and written off um, by the insurance company, taken and, and pulled and bent and, and rebent and, and, and made new. Um, where we grew up, and we lived next door to a collision expert. Uh, he was named the number, number, I don't know which number it was, but he was in the top 10 of all Canada. And um, he, he lived next door to us. And one of his sayings was often when the vehicles left his shop was, that's better than the factory. <laughs> I tell you what, God can take a, a, a messed up life that everybody else wrote off and he can make it better than the factory. And that's, that's what David is saying. Restore unto me the joy, uh, the, 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 the joy of thy salvation. Uphold me with thy uh, free spirit. What David had done had ruined him. It ruined him as a king. It had ruined him as a father. It had ruined him as a husband. Uh, he was ruined. He could no longer teach in verse number 16. Uh, pardon me, in verse number 13. He no longer had a testimony. He couldn't find his voice to sing. Um, he just felt so empty. He couldn't stand before his enemies. He was powerless and he had no testimony. But when God restored him, he took that ruined, he, he took that ruined wreck yeah. and he just made something good. Sure. He took that ruined relationship between David and Bathsheba and he brought forth Solomon right. yeah. that would carry on the kingdom and build a temple. Isn't it wonderful how God can just take that, um, that which is wrecked and, and make it renewed? I've heard stories of, of, of guys that have been in similar situations and, and absolutely ruined their lives and came back like David did. And God has use them gloriously to help others stay out of pitfalls. And, and uh, I'm not gonna, I'm not going to get off on that bunny trail right now because I want to stay within uh, our time. But he, David says, uphold me with thy free spirit. Uphold me, Lord, with thy spirit of freedom so that I don't have to fear. 
So I don't have to, to, to wonder um, what judgment is coming upon me or what my enemies are saying. I don't even want to care about that. The Apostle Paul says, now the Lord is that spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And that, that's, what's what, that's what David is talking about here with this free spirit. You know, we often tend to hang on to guilt. We often uh, tend to, to have this heavy feeling after the Lord has already forgiven. And David said, I don't want that. I don't want to go around um, with this feeling of guilt if God has already forgiven me. And so he prayed specifically that he would be upheld by the free spirit of God and that he would not get caught up in that spiral of despair and, and that spiral of depression that the devil so often just tries to defeat us with and take us down. Um, God desires to give restoration. God desires to give renewal. And David got a hold of the fact that, uh, first of all, it comes with repentance. But after that, desire it, go after it, and God will grant it. One of, uh, of my friends in ministry said, don't put a period where God puts a comma. Amen. That's good. Don't put a period where God puts a comma. And, uh, you know, that's, that's the problem with suicide today. This suicide is on the rise. It's a permanent solution. I didn't intend to end with this, but I, I, I guess I will. Um, it's, a, it's a permanent solution to a temporary problem. Don't put a comma where God puts a, or don't put a period where God puts a comma. And uh, what a good example of how David didn't do that. Um, it wasn't the end for him. It was. It would have been the end for most everybody else when David was restored into fellowship and as a friend of God. Let's look to the Lord in prayer. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love. I pray that you would help us to use this example of, of David's renewal, a repentance and renewal, and that, Lord, we would in our times of willful uh, sinning come to you in the same way, that we would be re restored unto the, the fellowship which you desire. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right.